Hi, I'm Mike Sintolo, Chief Analyst of Cabot Growth Investor and Cabot Top 10 Trader. And I'm here with your Cabot Weekly Review, and I'm recording this July 8th, around noon time, a little afternoon time. Um, so this week, I think we're kind of at another point in the market. We've been had seen a couple of these this year where nothing positive officially has happened yet, but the market has probably worked over the past, I'd say, six, seven weeks to put itself in position for something positive to happen, at least in the intermediate term. Okay, from a top-down perspective, you know, the intermediate term trend, the longer term trend of the market, of sectors, of stocks, I, I think more than 80% of uh, stocks on each exchange, NYSE and NASDAQ are still below their 200 day lines. Um, and you're still seeing a lot of new lows most days. Today's a little fewer, but you know, until proven otherwise, the broad market's unhealthy. So nothing has really officially changed with any of the sort of rubber meets the road evidence. That said, sort of some of the baby steps we started to see really in mid-May, which was growth stocks began to resist the decline. They've been the quote-unquote leaders of the downside, and they've sort of stopped going down. We've had some relative strength in growth funds and growth indexes like the NASDAQ, which I'll show you. And then this week, I have to say that we finally have seen a few stocks, a few, not a ton, break out on the upside. Some to all-time highs, some are just quote-unquote only multi-month breakouts. But some things that have lifted off on good volume and have at least for two or three days, okay, held up. So I think we're kind of at that key juncture. If this is sort of one of these six-week periods where the bears are just catching their breath and now they have some of these stocks breaking out to new highs, they have the indexes kind of running into some resistance, they'll come in pretty soon and hammer the market. If, however, we start to see these breakouts follow through on the upside, we see some other fresh breakouts, we see uh, some gaps to the upside on earnings, what a concept, you know, in, in, in the next couple of weeks, we could have something to deal with. Right now in Cabot Growth Investors model portfolio, we did a little, I mean, the smallest amount of nibbling this week, but we're still more north of 80% in cash. That said, if some of these good vibes continue, I'll probably put a little bit of money to work. And then if we get an intermediate term green light, put a little bit more money to work. And if we start making money and things gap up on earnings, put a little bit more money to work. And that's kind of how I would handle it from here. Right now, we still advise defense first and foremost, but now's not the time to stick your head in the sand despite all the bad news. Make sure you're ready to uh, take some action if the market tells us to here over the next few weeks. Okay, let's hop into the charts. As usual, I'm using a program called MarketSmith. You can learn more at marketsmith.com. It's a product of Investors Business Daily. Get out my line pen. So here's the NASDAQ. And so first, just looking at sort of the, um, um, like I said, the rubber meets the road stuff. So, you know, here's the NASDAQ. It's right into the 50-day line. Okay, now, on the positive, this is the first time it's even challenged the 50-day line really since mid-April. So it's been, whatever, two and a half months, almost three months at this point. Um, so maybe it's a little change in character. That said, you know, we'll see how it goes. From an intermediate term basis, we need to see this index higher than it was five weeks ago, basically. And five weeks ago was up here, okay? So still intermediate term trend is down, lower highs, lower lows. Nothing officially has changed, okay? But we are seeing a little bit of relative strength here. You can see this little blue line is the relative strength to the S&P 500 for the NASDAQ. Nothing dramatic, but it has been sort of uh, crawling higher, I guess I would put it here, over the past five or six weeks, okay? Again, looking through the other stuff, you know, this is the S&P 500. It's not even to the 50-day line, just really to the 25-day line. Uh, if you look at, this is the Russell 2000, IWM, um, below the 25-day line, mid caps, MDY, below the 25-day line, New York Composite, um, you know, well below the 25-day line. And really, if you just run through, you know, here's the financials, XLF, below the 25-day line. Materials, this is XME. I mean, this is, they've been buried. Um, industrials, XLI, you know, below the 25-day line. Now, a lot of these, to be fair, have kind of done nothing here for a few weeks, so I guess you could say that's positive. It's sort of a holding its own during the past five or six weeks, but, you know, still nowhere near an intermediate term uptrend. Chip stocks have been a mess. Uh, they've bounced here this week, but you can still still below the moving averages. So nothing's really changed, like I said, from an intermediate point of view. The one thing I would say that's changing, and we've been talking about it in recent videos, is the NASDAQ is now, relative of the major indexes, relatively uh, the strongest one, where it's really all year it's been pretty much the weakest one. And if you do look at some of the growth funds, which which I do, um, this is the IPO fund, you know, you know, look at the fund has come down here and now it's here. No one's going to say this is some major uptrend, but relative to the other sectors, you can see it's actually above. It's been living above the 50 day line here for the last really all week. OK, um, the ARK fund, ARKK, I don't really officially follow it, um, but you keep an eye on it just as sort of a sentiment measure. Um, again, kind of above 
uh, the 50 day line for a few days. Um, even even other things like the QQQJ, which I like as sort of a mid measure, you can just see it's it's really been again bottoming out since mid May. It had this one day in June where it, a couple of days, I guess, where it dove below there. Um, it did test the 50 day line uh, as I record this here on Friday. So there is a little bit of relative strength there. And given that the growth stock, first of all, I invest in growth stocks, so obviously I care about that more. But also just from a student of the market perspective, growth stocks were the leaders of this down move. OK, so just like if you had a bunch of leaders on the upside and they all topped out uh, in a bull market, you'd say, well, what does this mean? That's not always a death knell, but it's not good for the market. Now you're starting to see some of these leaders on the downside. I wouldn't say they're breaking, you know, going nuts on the upside, but there's some, you know, resistance there, especially relative to some other things. So it's kind of kind of interesting. You're even seeing some, you know, what I would say, you know, some names like this is Snowflake. It's not on my watch list personally. You know, it's from 400 down to pretty much 100. Got cut, you know, three quarters. But you can see again, it's been kind of moving higher here. It's living above the 25-day line, living above the 50-day line in recent days. I just think again, not. To, I'm going to get into some individual stocks in a second. But again, I just think, you know, we've had a couple of times in here, um, maybe here. I think this was too early, but obviously this was a rally. And on this rally, the market kind of put in some stuff underneath the surface, some work, some baby steps. And it's like, hey, we're in a position where if we get some follow through, we could have something good on the intermediate. I mean, I can't say longer term. We're still way below the 200 day line. But, you know, could we have an intermediate term rally that goes on for a few weeks and some stocks make runs and, you know, we'll see where we are in a few weeks? You know, I think so if the market can build on this. On the flip side, this is sort of it's sort of a, this is what the bear markets like to do is they tease you. You know, you you know, you buy someone a couple of drinks and then they leave. You got nothing but the bill. Um, so, you know, a lot of times you kind of run into the 50 day line, you run into some resistance, some things chill out for four five, six weeks Some people get their hopes up and then the sellers come in and really hit stuff. So that's certainly possible. And that's why I'm not advising any real change in stance here. But I do think it's important to keep your eyes open. Um, certainly it would make some sense, given the negative sentiment given the, you know, the growth stock resilience, yada, 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 that some things could make some moves on earnings and maybe we get some intermediate term green lights going forward. So just be open to that possibility. Um, the biggest thing to me, really, and this is something that hasn't happened this year. I know, you know, a lot of times we rally for a few days and it's like, well, what's different? You know, what's different now than here and here? You know, like I was saying earlier, and the answer is, yeah, you're right. Not much. One thing that has started to change is we're starting to see a little, um, some some breakout. So this is Halozyme H A L O. This is actually a legitimate uh, base, and I've mentioned this a thousand times. So I'm not going to get you know go go into it. But basically, um, one little tool for your tool chest. Just going forward, whenever you have a deep, long correction, consolidation, base building phase, whatever you want to call it, um, usually the handle, so to speak, the final consolidation, usually will be a base in and of itself. In this case, this was a five week structure which in and of itself is kind of long enough for a little bit of a launching pad and the stock is you know getting going and you can see the accumulation that's been going on here on the weekly chart for weeks now you know prior um quote unquote breakout attempts in just about everything if we go to the daily chart you can kind of see oh look it lifted above some resistance here and then it quickly got yanked down by the market um you know it kind of lifts above some resistance here and then it gets yanked down by the market this is i'm using halozyme as the example but you could pick any stock pretty much except for you know energy stocks earlier in the year um, but every time things approach resistance boom they get hit back now it's really letting loose on the upside on some pretty good volume let's see what happens does it hold does it consolidate does it keep building those would be bullish encouraging signs does it just crap out, come in next week and crap out or later this afternoon on huge volume and somebody downgrades it and the stock falls 10 percent? That would be a sign that really nothing much has changed in the environment. But the fact that we are seeing this let loose on the upside, not to make this chart too messy, which is what I like to do. But, um, you know, really big volume breakout, legitimate RP line highs, got the numbers, got the liquidity, got the sponsorship. If you, even if you don't buy it, it's something I think to take note of and watch as sort of a sentiment sign. OK, um, end phase. We've mentioned this before. ENPH, it's testing resistance in here. I can't say it's really broken out yet, but clearly, you know, the weekly chart looks ready. It hasn't done anything for all this time. And again, you kind of have this. I don't want to say this is the tightest thing of all time, but it's been five weeks uh, of consolidation in here. That's kind of allowed. You know, it's kind of um, 
the sellers seem to be losing their grip on it a little bit, at least to this point. Um, Celsius is another one. We've mentioned this. Now, one, one thing I would say, and I was talking with Jacob Mintz about this earlier today, actually, none of these I would say are like your liquid leaders. So that is a snafu here. I mean, I would prefer that you have, um, I'm all for some glamour stocks, but it would be nice to have, you know, I'm not talking MasterCard, but just something that's sort of a big liquid, a big stock that's like, hey man, Fidelity is going to buy the hell out of this thing. I can't say any of these stocks are really, man, these are just right down, right in the wheelhouse of these big institutions. Um, but nevertheless, we'll take what we can get. So, so far here's Celsius, still has all this overhead up here. It's still volatile as all get out. But again, you kind of have this four or five week situation on here, which basically sat on top of this prior structure. And then this week it really came out on big volume and has actually advanced a little bit since then. Again, kind of, you know, whether you buy it or not or whatever, but you know, sharp pullback, you know, breakout failure, not a good sign. The more the more of these that can hold and follow through on the upside, maybe we have something to work with, okay? Uh, Royalty Pharma, RPRX, this is interesting. It's kind of a British company, kind of like, um, well, it's not like Halazine, but it's almost like an investment firm that basically buys royalties, um, gives people capital. You can see it's not a dynamic performer in here, but growth has been pretty, it's been up and down, but it's, it's a decent, Take my word for it. If you, if you look underneath the numbers, I know the numbers look kind of weird here, but if you look at sort of the royalty numbers that come in and the projections, it looks pretty good. And it's been bottoming out here for months. And if you just kind of blow into the daily chart, blow up into the daily chart, this, it looks wild, but this is really a pretty well-controlled sort of a double bottom structure. It's starting to tighten up in here. I'm not going to give you specific levels, but again, if you can kind of get sort of a big volume thrust through here, maybe it could join the party. Uh, neuro, excuse me, Neurocrine Biosciences, NBIX, um, again, more, more of a bottoming base. There's been so much damage. You're not going to find a lot of things that are breaking out to new highs. You're just not. Um, and so, and that's another reason why, you know, even if we do get going here, you want to go slow. But again, we kind of had this rally off the bottom, a little bit of a cup with handle, whatever. Basically, $100 looks like it's, you know, just basically has been resistance. I'm not saying it's a super important pivot. But again, if you get some thrust through there, if, you know, it would be good. If you come in next week and everything melts down, not as good, okay? Argenics, you know, I mentioned a lot of medical names, obviously. Um, here's a decent example. I still think the stock is okay, um, but it, again, it approached its old high from back here. I think it was around 380, and then boom, you know, right, it, yeah, right around 380, and now here we are at 350. So, okay, so far, I mean, today's a bad day, but, you know, can it hold here and sort of steady itself and get going, or is it just sort of uh, down. So I'm just I'm presenting you with a lot of these names. Um, I still think Chinese stocks look good. I know, I know it's it's hard. Lee Auto to me looks great. Honestly, if the stock did sit around for another couple weeks, um, this I mean it looks it looks right. Uh, we'll see what happens. You know who knows with China. Uh, maybe it shakes out. Maybe there's recession fears. Maybe the government says something. But certainly acts right. Another week or two of consolidation or some sort of shakeout would be interesting here. Um, but it's a, almost kind of a persistent pullback at this point. Um, but again, it's got some old old resistance to deal with, right? You know, back here. And again, the stock is still hesitating. Um, Pin Duo Duo PDD. This is one of those. Again, you know, came got got killed, bottomed out for a couple months. Had a nice run recently with some volume. And then so far, this is kind of what I like to see is, you know, it's turned up, the moving average is turned up. It's still only around the 200 day line. We're not saying it's, you know, it's not 1999 out there, but the stock has been choppy on a day to day basis. It's very volatile, but just look at, you know, the overall pattern. When you look at it, it's really having quote unquote trouble giving up much of those gains to this point. We'll see what happens coming into next week. But if it can kind of hold, the longer it can kind of hold up here, the more, uh, the greater the chance I should say that you'd expect it to follow through on the upside. Uh, Jinko Solar, JKS, Solar's been strong, you know, end phase I mentioned. Um, and this one's a little sloppier. It's not like a easier uh, figure, but, you know, just generally speaking, you know, it's been, it kind of had trouble with this area for a long time. This is the weekly chart. And then this week, it's the last couple weeks, really, it seems to be letting loose on the upside. These names are extremely volatile. If you do buy them, I would advise personally, just generally speaking, keeping it small, using a loose loss limit. You know, these aren't, I don't think we're, you know, Again, we don't have like the liquid leaders that you can just like it's blasting off on earnings and it's never going to look back. So handle with care. But if nothing else, I think keeping some of these on a watch list or just to use them as sentiment measures makes sense. And just a few other names here. So Palo Alto Networks, um, you know, this acted almost perfectly for a lot of the correction. But one thing I always say is good stocks can go bad in a hurry in a bad market. So, that you know, it only counts 
if you can get through the entire market decline in good shape, not just part of it. So Palo Alto eventually just collapsed, you know, under the weight of the market. But I have to say it, it collapsed here for two weeks and we owned it and we sold it somewhere in here. Um, but since then, it doesn't look great. But again, you kind of have a little bit of it. Let me clean up the chart for you. Short term, and this is short term. This isn't like the others, but you have a little resistance here. Um, testing the 200 day line. It's above the 50. Can it, you know, can it thrust higher here? Kind of get back to within striking distance. And maybe this uh, big decline was just one big shakeout. So it's one of them kind of keeping a distant eye on. Um, Zscaler, not quite as good. This is also in the cybersecurity field. But again, you're starting to see some of these um, get above the 50 day and if they can just you're trying to gain ground and hold it gain ground and hold it right now You're probably not at like I said 1999 where you're just running Okay, um, so you're trying to gain ground and hold it and you know last one I'll just mention is sort of a turnaround not really for me um, the, the numbers aren't there. They're probably too low, but this is zoom video obviously um, You know, this was the pandemic run really a classic run uh, if you're into the ascending base in here, I mean, it's really a great chart to study. And then you had your blow off top right in here. This was your climax top and the stock did go higher. But of course, that was it. And the stock's down, whatever, still down 70 percent. But after being down 80 percent or whatever, it did, you know, have this volume here on earnings. And, you know, it's almost hard to see on this daily. Let's just stick with the weekly. You can just see this big volume clue on the weekly chart, a little bit more buying, follow up buying there. And it's kind of living above the 50 day line probably more of a turnaround play. I'm not, it's not that interesting to me, but I mean, I shouldn't say that. I think this chart does look good. It's obviously a good company and maybe they have something the till that the market knows about, so to speak. Um, but we're just seeing a little bit more of this sort of turnaround action, like it wants to go higher if the market can stay out of its own way. So long story short is, you know, I am, I guess I would just say I'm encouraged, but I'm not bullish yet. I mean, you know, I think we've been trying, you know, here's the, even the NASDAQ, this is the weekly chart. It's been, you know, a couple months trying to find support. You've already had a 30% decline. You have a lot of bad sentiment out there. So I think the environment is ripe and we're starting to see some stocks stretch their legs. But now, like I said, we're kind of at that key, hey, the next week or two will be key, will be important juncture. That's sort of the juncture we're at, which we've been at a couple of times this year. Hey, if we can keep this going, great. If not, we could be back in the soup. So be ready, have your watch list ready. I'm not opposed to a little, you know, a couple of, you know, throw a couple lines in the water, you know, sort of thing. Uh, see if anything bites. But uh, for the most part, let's just keep our eyes open and see if this is sort of the nascent bottom building phase. And let's just see if we can stretch our legs. And yes, if we stretch our legs, we'll probably pull back at some point. I don't think it's going to be off to the races. But again, you're just trying to gain ground and hold it. And the fact that we're starting to see some stocks actually break out on the upside might be the first sign that we're really seeing sellers lose their grip after, you know, what's really been eight months of a pretty strong bearish phase. So we'll keep our eyes open and stay in touch as always. That's all the that time I have for today. As always, thanks for listening and be sure to come by again next week for another Cabot Weekly Review.